Today we're doing this delicious brunch or lunch recipe, this beautiful tomato pie. This is just impressive as it is delicious. So we're gonna start with some fresh tomatoes that I got from a friend's garden, but feel free to get some from the grocery store. But I'm so happy to have these. They're absolutely delicious and beautiful. Look at those colors. So I'm just doing a slice here. Not too thin, cause I do want it to have some bite when we go to bake this in the oven but um, thin enough so that the presentation is pretty because like I said, it's pretty and delicious. So I'm just stacking my tomatoes here in my colander so that I can drain the liquid. Same thing here with the salt, it's gonna help draw out the liquid. And then I'm gonna put this to the side and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Now for the pie crust. I have one of my favorite delicious pie crust recipes, so check this out. But we're just gonna pre-bake this so that it won't be soggy when we add the filling. So I have pie crust, my oven is heated. I'm gonna get this in for about 10 to 20 minutes as well. Now, let's move on to the beautiful part of this, mixing those colors, the red from the tomato and the green from the onion. It's just beautiful presentation, but also these flavors marry very well together. Now, last season, I would have been able to do this completely by myself from my garden, but this season I haven't really done much to it, but that's okay. I know a lot of people are rounding out their harvest of basil and the tomatoes, the jalapenos, the squashes, and all of those beautiful things. So this is definitely a good recipe that you can use up some of the bounty. So here I have basil, of course, because it complements the tomatoes so well. I got about a handful, maybe about half a cup. I'm just gonna chiffonade, I just learned that word. So just little ribbons here and slices so that again, we get a little bit of basil in every bite. So I like to just kind of mix this together um, and you'll see when we put it on top of the pie. Now back to the tomatoes, I'm just taking some paper towels and I am firmly pressing out that liquid as much of it as I can again so we won't get a soggy pie and just do this to your heart's content, whatever you feel is enough, but I do it until really I can't drain anymore. Now let's go to the actual filling part of this, which is going to be some cheeses and a little mayo. Now here today I have some Gruyere and cheddar. I think this blend is very, very good. It gives you that nice little cheese pull. Next up is the fun part, which is adding all of the seasonings. Now, salt and pepper is the taste, but I also am going to season this up with some garlic powder. I have some thyme, some oregano, and a little bit of red chili flakes for a little kick. It's not a lot of spice, but it does elevate the flavor here. This really feels like you're eating a grown-up pizza. It's so delicious. The textures are good. It's just elevated, like I said. So I really think that you will enjoy this. And if you do, go ahead and hit the like button. I'm also going to add some mayonnaise into this mixture and get it mixed really well before assembling the pie. So here we're getting this good and mixed. It's a little tough, but it's okay. Just mix it enough to where all of those flavors are marrying. And then we're gonna get ready to start layering our adult pizza, <laughs> this beautiful pie. So I have the pie crust that's already been pre-baked. And the first layer going in is going to be the tomatoes. So the tomatoes, you really don't have to worry about a pattern here. I just like to layer them on top of each other. And then after we get the tomatoes, we're going to add the second layer, which is the green layer, which is that basil and onions that we did earlier. And then of course, we will top this with the cheese mixture. Now that cheese mixture, we're gonna go ahead and spread on top. It can be a little tough too, so you'll see me pour it in the bowl, and then I'm actually going to press and spread with my fingers to get it evenly across. After that, I have my uh, oven preheated at 350 degrees. We're gonna bake this off for 30 minutes, and it is absolutely delicious. The hardest part about this is waiting on it to cool so you can eat it. Mm -hmm. 